Hey guys and girls, welcome, 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 welcome back to this beautiful channel here where we go through some examples and stuff in C++. So what we're going to do today is we're going to introduce pointers. Finally, 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 finally. We've gone through everything we need to go through and uh, I choose now to go through pointers before uh, classes. Just because classes, well, as soon as we get into classes we'll be able to use our pointers to make some cool stuff. So there will be a lot of videos on that. So. Uh, let's just start with pointers. Let's get to know the memory. And if you follow the tutorial later, which I'll be putting up, uh, the uh, the memory, how that works, we'll go through that. But basically, what I can tell you is that there are there is a stack in the memory, and there is a heap. All right, heap and stack. And wait, there we go. Okay, so what is the heap and a stack? Well, the heap is dynamic and the stack is pretty much static which means that as, as soon as we make an integer equals zero like this okay what happens is that it is put into the stack with an address okay zero zero f something 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 and this memory place in the stack now has the integer for the remainder of the program uh, program cycle well if we had a pointer int pointer uh, int ptr I'll go through all this well that's how you initially you could initialize it to zero you could initialize it to null but my recommendation is null pointer okay because it's specifically made to initialize a pointer and it gives it a nullified address so I'll go through this do not worry this is the rule for creating a, uh, a pointer so you tell the computer what type you want the pointer to point to and then you give it a name an identifier and you tell the computer that you're making a pointer and not just a normal integer by putting this asterisk sign here and then you initialize it so what is a pointer well it holds an address this a we created here has an address in the stack okay the pointer itself int now is created in the stack as well it's created in the stack in the static part int ptr has its own address something something okay but this can contain addresses to other variables this a contains numerical values okay actual binary values so this has zero right now this has a null pointer value okay this is a pointer to an integer alright so what does that mean well the thing is that pointers cannot hold numerical values or anything in itself only addresses they can point to other things that are holding stuff so think of your hand just think of your finger you know it's not a a a value in itself but you can point to a phone you can point to your computer and you know stuff like that and you can actually hold its value uh, the address to it okay it's just like it's just a pointer it's what it says it's a pointer it can point to things and it's made to save memory and it can save a whole lot of memory it can help you in so many ways pointers are the most beautiful thing in the world next to classes uh, but basically what we'll do here we have our int ptr and when you create it you use the asterisk to show the computer what you're creating when you use it you don't have to all right not in this situation so remember it's holding an address we we're giving it the address to a all right so let's say what happened here well pointer is get is uh, uh, being assigned the address to the variable a okay this is really important that you're following me here if we said this we're trying to give this int pointer which holds addresses the value zero Okay, if we said 10, we're trying to give it the value 10. We want to give it the address to A. So we use the ampersand operator. In front of any variable, the ampersand operator accesses the address of where it's at. Not the value, which is 10 now, but the address. Okay, and remember, pointers only hold addresses. So this pointer now holds the address to A, which is 00FSD, for example. See? It's holding it. It has its own address, but it's holding an address. So this is now pointing to A. Okay, this is pointing to the memory where A is. Okay, so int pointer is basically A now. If you remember functions and the reference variables, they function in the exact same way, the same operator and the same stuff. So they're pointing to different variables. 
Okay, so the, the beauty with this is if we have another int b here, which is 20, we don't have to create another variable, you know, in, within a function or something where you want to just access these two through a pointer. We can just use the pointer and we can point to different things. And I'm sure you'll find a lot of ways to use this. And uh, I'll show you a lot of different ways as well. I just can't think of every single one right now. But uh, it's pointing to A. So let's, let's print what int pointer is pointing to. Now, if we print this, I want to show you what happens. Okay, I want to show you what happens if we print int pointer. The actual pointer. Oh, whoops. Uh, let me see what... Oh, whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. What am I doing, guys? I don't even know anymore. All right. Oh, whoops. Main already defined. Ugh, this is a later tutorial we're going to go through. But okay, what happened here? What happened here? Let's close that. Let's close that. Let's stay here. So what happened? Well, we got the address printed out. This is an address to the actual int pointer or the int pointer uh, what what it's pointing to. So it's pointing to A, remember? So we printed out the address to the variable A here, which we created. So, but how do we point, print out what A is actually the value? Well, how do we print out this? Well, it's called dereferencing, and I named this, uh, and I mentioned this in an earlier video. And dereferencing means that you go to the address, and then you actually go into the variable, and you find the value of it. So you dereference this. Dereference. Okay. So this is really important. Then we get a 10. See? A is pointing to 10. And now, all of a sudden, we can change what the int pointer is pointing to by saying B. Okay. And then if we do the same thing here. Okay. Uh, let's, let's print out the address as well. Why not? Okay. Okay, the address and the value is being printed out. So how do we do this? Let's do this like this. Whoops. Right, I think that will do it. Okay, so we're printing out the addresses and then the values. So let's do this. So the first address is this, A, which is 10. And then we changed the pointer, it's the, our finger. We took it and we pointed it in another direction to another variable here, which we know exists, and we got the address to it and the value. So you see, that's how pointers work. They point to addresses in themselves, but you dereference them to get the value. And you can do this with any type. You can have doubles and stuff. But just remember, you need to have the same pointer type as the, point, as the things you want to point to. So we can't have a double pointer pointing to these things. You got to do all kinds of conversions and stuff. We'll get into that later. But this is the way you want to keep going. All right. Initialize it with null pointer and then make sure you know what you're doing here. All right. So in the next video, we're going to go in a little more elaborate and talk about some more rules and stuff and, and just make sure you get all this stuff. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.